Namaste. Hope everybody's well. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Trevor and I are gonna get together on a few chants and uh, hope you'll sing along. First, we're gonna start off with some ohms. a short prayer. It's an invocation of the love that lives within us. It's who we truly are. Pranavam bhavana kuma kalabana pava kajyana gan Yasu Hradaga, the Saint Ram Sarachapa, a Tulita Baladham, Hemshela Badeham, the Nujavan Krishan, Kaninama Graganyam. Sakalaguna Nidhan Vanaranam Medisham Ragupati Priya Bhaktam Vata Jatam Namani Oshpadi Kurtavarisham Mashiki Kritarakshasam Ramayana Mahamalaratnam Vandinilatmajam Anjananandaram Viram Janaki Shokanashanam Kati Samakshahanta Vandilanka Vayankaram Gisindho Salilam Salilam Yashoko Ahi Janakatma Jaya Adayatane Tadahalanka Amitam Tranjali Ranjani No javam, Maruta Tulia Vegam, Jitendriam, Udhimatam Burdishtam, Vatatma Jam, Vanurayutam Ukam, Shri Ramadutam. Sharanam Prapadhyay Shri Ram Dutam Sharanam Prapadhyay Shri Ram Dutam Sharanam Prapadhyay Shri Ram Dutam Sharanam that line means I take refuge and shelter 
and the messenger of Ram, Hanuman. Hanuman is the breath of God, the breath of Ram, and he brings that life to our hearts. And we take refuge in that love. Anjane Mati Patalana Kanchanadra Kamane Avigraha Tadija Taramula Vasanam Aveyami Pavamana Nandanam Yatradiatvaragunath Kirtana Tatra Tatra Kritamasta Kanjali Vashpavari Paripurna Lochanam Martinamat Rakshasantrakam Vodobajuranga Bali Hanuman Kije
Pala, go Pala, Deva Kinandana, go Pala. Go Pala, go Pala, Deva Kinandana, go Pala. Gopala, Gopala, Deva Kinandan, Gopala. Ram 
or the Shiva Stuti, and it's from the Ramcharitamanas of Tulsidas. In the story, during the war between Rama and the army of the demons, Ravana's son captures Rama in a noose of serpents. And Garuda, who is the vehicle of Vishnu, he comes and he liberates Rama from this noose of serpents that was created by magic, by Meghanath. And then he goes away again. But in his mind, some doubt arose. How could the Lord of the universe be captured? I don't understand. So later on, Garuda goes to Shiva and he tells him of his doubt and asks him to help him. And Shiva says, well, I'm too busy. I'm on my way somewhere. You go see this being named Kakapu Sundi, who lives on a sacred mountain in the center of the earth where no one can come, special place. And so Garuda goes to this place. Now Kakapu Sundi is a crow. And he lives on this mountain and he always talking about Hari, telling the, so the stories and leelas of Vishnu, Rama. So Garuda goes to him and tells him of his doubt and Kakabasundi frees him of that doubt about Rama. Then when he's finished, Garuda says to Kakabasundi, how is it that you are a crow? You are a fully enlightened being. I don't understand. How did this happen? And Kakabasundi tells him his story. He says that he was a devotee of Shiva, but he was very arrogant, very arrogant and nasty. And one day he was meditating in the temple, Shiva temple, with the lingam, and his guru came into the temple. And this devotee sat there as if he knew his guru came in, but he pretended he didn't know, and he sat there pretending to meditate. And at that moment, Shiva manifested out of the lingam and cursed him for his disrespect for his guru. You will be born a crow for millions of lifetimes. 
Now the guru was so kind-hearted that he sang a, a prayer to Shiva to soften his heart and ask him to take back the curse. But Shiva said, well, I can't take the curse back, but I can change it. So yes, you will be born as a crow for millions of lifetimes, but you will be fully enlightened and you will be able to see all the leelas of Ram in all the universes because Ram takes form in each universe according to the laws of that universe and how one appears in those universes. So Kakabha Sundi explained all this to Garuda and then he, he sings, he told Guru the prayer that his Guru sang. I'll just read you two verses. It's such a beautiful prayer. I bow to the ruler of the universe, whose very form is liberation, nirvana rupam. Very form is liberation. The omnipotent and all-pervading Brahma, manifest as the Vedas. I worship Shiva, shining in his own glory, without any physical qualities, completely whole, desireless, the all-pervading sky of consciousness, and wearing the sky itself as his garment. I bow to the Supreme Lord, who is the formless source of Om the self of all, transcending all conditions and states, beyond speech, beyond understanding and sense perception, full of awe, but gracious, the ruler of Kailash, the devourer of death, and the immortal abode of all virtues. Shiva, 
Sagmidam proctam be prena hartoshe, ye patanti nara bhakat, ye sam samhu prasideti. Karpura garam, karunavataram, samsara saram, ujagindraharam, sadava santam, Rdayara vende Ambhavani Saitam namami We just jumped in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, my mind is a blank right now. But Don't let's, worry, let's, let's just let's, flow. Let's, Okay, let's jump. You gotta learn how to flow, Krishna Das. You should try <laughs> chanting. It's really it helps you get into oh, your flow. I've never heard of that. What, could you explain it to me? Yeah, it's it? well, it's it's a thing called kirtan, and huh. yeah, it's like a call and response type thing. Is that uh, like a, a Spanish word or a Russian? Uh, word? Yeah, it's it's like a universal word, universal uh -huh. language. I think you'd be good at it. Really. 
Yeah, yeah. I think he'd be quite good at it. Right. Now I'm just good at sitting around, so I need something to be good at. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. So here, you know, here we are doing this yeah. um, kind of online, you know, presentation with all these wonderful people. And, you know, usually during this time, during the winter time, we're in Maui or... Um, you know, uh, with with Ram Das and yeah. I guess this is the first kind of the first uh, attempt of you know bringing this thing online after his passing. Also, given the situation we are in with COVID, like, yeah. what's your have you had any thoughts on it all, or is it just moving? <clears throat> you know, well, you know, uh, the bigger picture is way above my pay grade mm. you know so i just try to stay as calm as i can every you know every day every part of the day every minute of the day mm -hmm. but that kind of calm isn't something you can hold on to you know it it's a it's a way to sit at ease in mm -hmm. yourself regardless of what's happening mm -hmm. so the this situation has really forced me to Nah, I don't know if force is the right word, but it's created the opportunity for me to kind of pay more attention and and allow myself to slow down and mm. because you have to because you yeah. have to be able to deal with with the the anxiety that you're breathing in and out every day, you know, with the yeah. news and and everybody you talk to. Uh, Everybody's having such a, a a different, a new and different experience. So. Yeah, for sure. You know, Maharaji, in, in India, of course, they always used to say, always still say, do practice when you can. Mm -hmm. Because when the shit hits the fan, it's really hard to practice when you're really suffering. Yeah. yeah. When you have physical pain and mental pain. and uh, So this is a real regardless of, of what's going to happen in the next minute to the world, hmm. uh, in order to be in the right place to deal with whatever arises, we, you must, we must allow ourselves to land, you know? Mm -hmm. We really have to allow ourselves to land. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I don't know. You know, nobody ever taught us that growing up. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. I... I um, I was, I had to do this live stream thing the other night. It was the first time we tried to do it from a venue here in Colorado. And I did like a, and it's, you know, the first time I've been on stage since like Thanksgiving, ah. but I was talking about, it was like a storyteller thing. And I was talking about, you know, different albums and showing pictures and this is inspired from this, but one of the albums was called Kala and it was about time. Yeah, and and I was I was talking about how, you know, ever since I was a kid, growing younger kid growing up in this Western culture, you know, I had this really unhealthy uh, outlook towards time, and it, it, I always viewed time as like a pressure and like this thing just tick tock tick tock. You know, I think in our Western culture, especially, it's like you know you got to beat the clock, and it's like this mechanical thing, and yeah, bah, bah, yeah. Bah, 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 yeah. you know. And uh, my grandmother has passed away. Um, right before she passed, she kind of she said to me in this moment, "Oh, isn't time such a wonderful gift?" And uh, I thought that was interesting, given that it was like the end of her time. You know, yeah, she was yeah. passing. But my attitude towards time started to change after she said that. And that's anyway. Long story short, that's what kind of uh, the album is about. And you know, we we see in these different parts of the world how time is viewed as more of a spirit. You know, time is viewed as more as of a cycle. And, uh, you know, talking about India, like, it, when, we go, when we go to India and Nepal, my wife and I always say, you know, people just sit and just watch, you know, on yeah. the street, you know. Yeah. You know, they have a beady or drink a chai or whatever. It is. You yeah. know, people just sit and watch. Yeah. The men sit and drink beaties and yeah, yeah. the women are working. Yeah, the women are working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's just, yeah. um, it's, 
Yeah, I do know. It's just yeah. interesting. And now we're in this moment, I guess, where we're kind of forced to, everybody's been forced to kind of slow down. And yeah. that caused a lot of anxiety in some senses yeah. and then also um, a lot, lot of space in other senses. So it's just an interesting yeah. period, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, in the, in the Gita, when Krishna is uh, opening up Arjun's eye, uh-huh. and giving him darshan of the universal form mm. <clears throat> one of the things he says is i come as time the great mm. destroyer mm. and arjun sees all beings entering into krishna and all beings leaving coming out of krishna mm. in this endless cycle of rebirth and everything but he also recognizes that uh nothing's there's no time mm. because it's happening inside of time mm. there's no, you know it's a space and so it's as as it, time runs through us we don't mm. move through time we are always here mm-hmm. and time is is it, it time is in is it's a samsaric quality a, mm. an illusion a samsaric you know, in the present moment, now, there's no time. There's here and now. But our minds take us. Hmm. And our bodies seem to be decaying at different rates. Yeah. Well. So uh, it's very interesting. As you, uh, as you slow down, so even slowing down is a, is a time-related kind of concept. So it's, right. we just, our minds, we function in time. It's very... So we're trying to slow it down, speed it up, get there. Don't right. go yet. You know, it's always. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's not, you, you sound like my mind right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me turn, I'll change the channel. <laughs> yeah, I under, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But I love that when I had this experience in Kenchi in 1995, mm. I was standing next to where Siddhiman Jivantima was sitting. Mm. It was the day of the Bandara, and you know, 50, 60, 70,000 people were passing through the temple. Yeah. They were having their meal and going out the, the back entrance, which was open for the Bandara. Yeah. And as I sat there, I, I had this kind of, not a vision, but a feeling like right. all these people are coming in and leaving, and yet there's nothing moving anywhere. Yeah, and not only that, but I, I saw, I saw in my head, Maharaji dragging the people from out of their beds, mm-hmm. dragging them onto a bus, dragging them onto a train, mm. walking them down the road to the temple, mm. throwing the food in their mouths, and then dragging them home. Mm. But the people, they thought, "Hey, let's go to Kenchi. Yeah, we can catch that bus, and then we'll get that train." And yeah. So the two levels, right? I saw he was doing it all. Yeah. And yet he wasn't doing anything. It, it happened inside of him. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the experience that the people had. Right. The people thought, I'm doing this. This is happening to me. I'm making decisions. Yeah, yeah. So it's like those two levels of stuff, you know. Is that is that when Siddhima said to you, um, I, I want to show you Maharaji's big form? She didn't. She said no. They yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, she said you have to stay until the Bandara. You have to see Maharaji's big yeah. form. Okay. And yeah. I went. Wow. Yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. What's she talking about? You know. Yeah. So yeah, it was like that. Wow. You know, it's all grace, man. It's all yeah. grace. All we're doing is trying to figure out how to mm-hmm. cup our hands so it doesn't leak through as fast as it comes. Yeah. <laughs> And we're trying to grab, get a little of the drink. Uh, It's all grace. It's all grace. Just like I had that feeling, you know, we think we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. We think think we're chanting, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. The way they say it, the way it's said is that the actual chant is doing us. The name is remembering us. Yeah. I remember asking a a teacher of mine, I was like, you know, asking some instructions about whatever, japa and, and this and that and mantra and... She just said to me, you, you, you still think that you're doing it. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, 
Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't stop there. Who just said? Who thought they would shut up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the issue, one of the things that people get kind of stuck in is mm. is uh, thinking that they're doing it, thinking that it's up to them even in any way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, one time I said to my, you know, Maharaji used to say. I have the keys to the mind. Uh-huh. He would look at us and said, I have the keys to the mind. He said, I could turn your minds against me. We said, Baba, don't do that. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. He would laugh like a little uh-huh. kid, you know. Uh, he said, I could transfer you. Transfer Hojaiga. I'll transfer you. Baba, don't do that. So I said to Ma, I said, this is, you know, many years later. I said, Ma, Maharaji said he has the keys to the mind. Mm. So to me, that means that I am where he wants me to be, where he puts me, Mm. right? I said, so Ma, is it, is my effort required or is it all grace? If I'm just, if he's doing it, she said, Krishna Das, it's all grace, Mm. but you have to act like it isn't. Uh, So how perfect is that? Yeah. That's the ultimate reality and the relative reality inside of that. Mm -hmm. this is the world here we have to stop and go we we have to put the food in our mouth and not over our shoulder we have decisions to make you know but the the actual reality so my point was this is something that's to be experienced directly Mm -hmm. so when somebody tells you something we have and you go oh you know and you get a little insight the first we we make the next thought is already a mistake, so to speak, because we think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have work to do or I'll do something else. All we have to do, man, is chant. That's all we have to do. Mm-hmm. Maharaji said, repeat the name, mm-hmm. whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're feeling devotion, whether you're angry, whether you're mm-hmm. tired, just go on repeating the name. Yeah. And everything will be, everything will be accomplished. Yeah. yeah. So... That's, you know, he said that to us over and over. Dada told us those stories mm. about Maharaji and saying that. And mm-hmm. do we believe it? Yeah. You know, do we believe it? But see, I'm even, that's, it's all grace. Right. Also, even if right. I, I think it's my job to believe it. Yeah. It's his job to reveal it. Right. That's, that's I think, for a devotee, mm. this is... You know, Ramana Maharshi said there's two ways. Mm-hmm. Either you you inquire, who am I? Mm-hmm. Or you surrender to the Lord. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're obviously devotees to mm-hmm. some... Actually, we're all a mix of things. But on right. the, the devotee side is you surrender. This is his... If I understand, it's because of the grace. Right. It's his job to enlighten me. Yeah. My job is to clean the mirror of my heart. Right. That that's as best I can through my intention and my mm-hmm. like Siddhima, you're acting like it isn't all grace. Right, right. So, yeah. Yeah. Sri Ramakrishna said something like one of my favorite things, he said, you know, who can he said something like, Who can know God? He said, I don't even try. He said, I just I just call upon her as my mother and if she places he's like i'm like a kitten mm. you know, if she places me on the bed i say ma if she takes me in her arms i say ma if she puts me outside i say ma if she keeps me ignorant i say ma if she gives me knowledge i say ma he just yeah, yeah. you know that's kind of similar i guess in in those lines where you're Absolutely. just Absolutely. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Well, Hare yeah, Hare Ram. I mean, should we, should we not chant, but try to chant, but not, it's not us, but know that it's us? No, you can't. You just or what should we do? You sing. Thing. Okay. You just sing, you <laughs> chant, and anytime you notice you're not paying attention, you come back. That's yeah. the only thing you have to do. And, and you know, that's another interesting moment, isn't it? So yeah. you're singing, Ram, 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 Ram. Right. And then you recognize, oh, shit, I've been thinking about what I, about the, yeah. what I have to do tomorrow. Right. How did that moment happen that you recognize that you were not paying attention to the chant? 
which was coming out of your mouth. And right. maybe a thousand people around you also making noise. But you were thinking, how did that moment happen? Mm. You didn't do that. Mm. You were gone. Mm. You were asleep. You were living in dreamland. You were living in tomorrow already. How did it happen that? Mm. Oh. So that is already the fruit of previous karmas. Mm. Nothing comes from nothing. Actually, it does, but we don't talk like that. Yeah. You know, everything comes from a cause. Every effect comes from a cause. And that the effect is waking up. The only thing that can cause waking up is having planted the seeds of waking up, mm. which we must have planted. Why are we doing this stuff? We're born in America. We should be driving nice cars and or, mm -hmm. you know, going after more TVs and stuff like that. Uh, which we are probably anyway, but you know, <laughs> not. But we don't really believe it. I you get know? it. No, no, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, Mama, that was so. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maharaji said once to me, "I always follow the mother. Mm. I always follow the mother." Wow. Well, should we get to some music or what do you think? Let's do it. I'm sure people are bored out of their minds. Okay. <laughs> We're having a moment. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, All right, let's, chat. Yeah, let, let's jump in. Okay. Ram Ram. Jai Guru. Jai Ma. Uh, yeah, this song is a song called Up There and it was written about Sri Ma. I said, Di Ma. Um, there's a I'd like to tell the story real quick before we jump into the, the song. It just helps me uh, get into the zone. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, finding out to, about Maharaji so young, you know, I consequently learned of, of Ma by reading, you know, stories. Um, and uh, I always, you know, had the desire, I guess, to have her darshan. Um, and, uh, for whatever reason, uh, whenever I would go over to India, it was always kind of during the time of her being in retreat or, um, yeah, being in a different area, it just never worked out, you know, um, I always kind of went to India in the winter months and, and, um, that was kind of when she, you know, wasn't up in Kanchi or um, she was just, yeah, in retreat from what I understood. So it never really worked out, you know, and, and 10 years and what, however long it was going by, I knew Ma was getting old um, and it just, the, I guess the yearning was really there to see her, you know. Um, and then uh, I think it was in 2017, uh, my wife and I, made it a point to, you know, uh, when we were going over to India, we made it a point that our main, I guess, you know, reason for the trip was to have Mas Darshan. And we reached out to many different contacts of ours that had her association. And um, they told us that she'd be in Rishikesh at that time. So anyway, we, we went to Rishikesh and, and um, we heard so many, I guess, conflicting, or di not conflicting, but different reports of when she was giving darshan. And we kind of narrowed it down that she was giving darshan on, only on Sundays. Um, so we waited in Rishikesh for a week or so. Um, but then on, on Friday, I thought, you know, let's just go, let's just go to the temple. You know, she's there. You know, maybe we'll like see her or, you know, she'll come out of her room or something like this. You know, I kind of had the desire, let's just go for RT, you know, and just see, you know. So um, I remember um, we went to the market and we got a shawl. We bought a, a, a shawl, um, the nicest white shawl we could find, you know, to offer to Ma. And... Um, we went to the temple for RT that night, Friday night. And we, we, we went to RT and we paid our respects to all the different shrines. And then um, Banu, the temple manager was there. And so I thought, oh, let me just go up to Banu and just see if I can, like, I don't know, 
get in there, you know? So uh, I went to him and I was like, hey, namaste, Banu, my name's Ram Priyadas, you know, blah, blah, blah. I know so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And, so and, so. and we have this shawl that we got from Ma. Can we offer it to Ma? Can we give it to Ma? And he's kind of like a little bit of a gruff, you know, character. And he like takes the shawl and he like looks at it. And then he's like, throws it back at me. He's like, come Sunday. So I thought, oh, okay. Okay, Sunday. Okay. So I went back to the shrine and my wife was like, what, what did he say? And I said, ah, he said, come Sunday, you know. And I was sitting there in front of Maharaji in the shrine and I, I just felt so dirty. You know, I felt so gross. I felt like, oh man, I like tried to buy Ma's darshan, you know, with a sh with this shawl or saying that I knew so-and-so. And, you know, I just felt like so much of my ego and like, can you force a dark, can you buy a darshan, you know? Can you force the mother's darshan? You know, these these thoughts are going through my head. I just felt just, just gross and I was kind of in my own crap. Um, yeah, it just felt really dirty. And we left the temple that night and I thought, I'll oh, just, you know, shake it off and, and we'll see her on Sunday, you know? So I remember that we wake up the next morning, it was Saturday and there's this huge storm that came through Rishikesh. There's lightning and thunder and rain and temperature dropped, like it got really cold. And I thought, oh my God, I hope this doesn't, you know, ruin our darshan for the next day. So that, that whole day I was in anxiety. And then Sunday we wake up and it was sunny, it was clear sky, it was a little bit cold, but I thought, oh my God, thank God it's not a storm, you know? So we get in a car and we head to the temple. We, we got there quite early to make, we didn't want to miss anything, you know? And uh, anyway, we get there, we, we, we kind of pranam to all the different temples and then we're sitting in front of Hanuman's temple there and just waiting, you know, not knowing, just waiting until Ma comes out, you know, because we heard different times of when she would come out. And um, we were there and then we saw this other Western lady named Shama. And uh, she came up to us and said, oh, are you, you know, Ram Priyadas and Bashanti? My friend Nina told me, you know, that you'd be here. And we're like, oh, yeah, that, you know, we're here. And nice to meet you and she was really really sweet and it was great that she was there because she's had Maz Darshan so many times and we were able to ask questions and you know understand the protocol and all this stuff and she was really sweet and she was telling us all the different stories that she's had with Ma so I was getting more and more excited you know to see Ma anyway some time went on and um Shama said let me ask what's going on you know let me ask when Ma's coming out so she goes up to Banu and she was like maybe 10 or 20 feet away. So I couldn't hear her, but I could see her face, you know, and I saw her face kind of get this concerned look. And I thought, oh God, that's not good. And she comes back to us and she says, um, I'm so sorry, but Ma's not giving darshan today. It's too cold. And I just went into a black hole. I just went like, oh my God. I just thought we've come so far. We've waited so long. She's literally like right here. Um, we're at her doorstep, you know, and she's just behind the door and we're just so close. I just was, I just was so upset. And my wife, she calls them Trevor holes. <laughs> I went into a deep Trevor hole and, um, yeah, it was just, it was not a good situation for me. And I remember I was just crying and I went up to Banu and I, held out the shawl and I just said, Banu, can you please give this to Ma? And he was like, you know, he looked at me and he was just like, oh, this kid's crying. Like, what's going on with this kid, you know? <laughs> but he was like, you know, can you come next Sunday? And I was like, no, Banu, we're, we leave tomorrow. You know, we go continuing. And uh, I just looked at him and I remember I just said, please, Banu, please, you know? And he looked at me and he said, go to the shrine and chant. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, that wasn't a yes, but that wasn't a no. So I went, we went into the shrine and we all started chanting and we were chanting for like a couple hours and my emotions were just on a roller coaster, like faith and doubt and faith and doubt. And I thought, oh, it's cause you tried to buy her darshan, you know, with that shawl, you, you, 
you know, it's your consequence, you know. And then I thought, oh, Maharaji doesn't love you, you know. Like, who are you? You're just this white kid from South Carolina, <laughs> you know. And then I was like, oh, have faith, you know. Maharaji brought you here, you know. This like, the, And then I was, again, like, whatever. Like, you know, it was just chaos. I was in my own drama. And uh, like I usually am. And um, we chanted for some time and then we came out and we, we were sitting in front of the temple and I just thought, you know, I'm gonna sit here until the temple closes tonight. I don't care, I'm stubborn, you know, it's just, I'm gonna wait. You know, if there's any chance that she comes out, I'm gonna be here, you know. So we were sitting there and more and more people started to leave, you know, cause they heard her, she wasn't giving darshan. And then, um, then, uh, yeah, before we knew it, we were like the only ones sitting there. And Bhanu comes out behind the corner and come. And we just, you know. And my wife and I were walking behind Bhanu and you could feel the energy kind of starting and you're already kind of like starting to get teary. And uh, he leads us kind of around the back and there's this staircase that goes up the back of the building, around the building to the roof. And we start walking up those stone stairs, those stone steps, you know, and we come around the corner and we see Ma for the first time. And um, she was just sitting there in a stainless white sari. Um, and she had two women beside her, you know, fanning her. Uh, and it just melted, you know, just melted. and. Um, Pranamed and you know just so many emotions crying and looking at her and not really too many words said but they didn't need to be said you know and then we sang a bhajan for ma and um i remember watching her seeing her tap her feet as we were like singing the bhajan and I thought, oh you know she's here you know she she hears it you know uh and then um anyway we 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 sit for maybe 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, and then we, we get up and her uh, her attendant looks at us and says, rejoice, uh, you've met the best of them. Uh, and and uh, then, she, then, then she said, sing to Ma wherever you are, she can hear you. So we started, you know, waterworks. <laughs> and um, it was just, it was too much, you know. And we came downstairs and Banu was waiting for us. And we, we I remember we like hugged him, you know, it's, it was, I think, kind of weird for him. We we're like crying and he's like, oh my God, okay. You know, and leads us into the kitchen and feeds us a big plate of kitchery and that's it. And we left and went back to where we were staying and immediately wrote this song. Um, so yeah, this is this is for Ma and, and about that experience and, um, special special moment special moment it's called up there mm -hmm. Tell me what just happened up there I remember, I remember walking up those stairs We were stepping into a sacred light Tell me what just happened up there I remember looking at the wrinkles on your hands Reminding me of rivers in the Holy Land Tell me what just happened up there You 
can heal my soul Tell me what just happened up there Stepping into a sacred life Tell me what just happened up there I remember looking at the wrinkles on your hands Reminding me of rivers in the holy land Tell me what just happened up there So this song is, uh, it's it's one of my favorites, it really kind of, one of those songs that just brings me in, I guess. Um, but it, it's, a, it's really inspired by the Baals of Bengal, and the Baals um, have been very uh, influential on my music and, and my life. Um, uh, the Baals are a group of people um, primarily from uh, West Bengal, um, and they're they're very very they're a very interesting group. Um, they are sadhakas um, that don't really give too much importance to perhaps you know temples or idols or um, you know rules and orthodoxy and this this type of thing they kind of rebel against those things um they they give importance to the human um, and they believe in what they call the moner manush which means the person of the heart and they believe that this moner manush resides in in everyone and everything and so the human body is the greatest temple you know um and if you serve another human being, it's the greatest act of service, you know, because you're really serving that one without a second, that Mona Manush, you're serving your beloved. Um, and they they believe that this, uh, they, they sometimes refer to the Mona Manush as an uncatchable bird that's flying in and out of the heart. Um, and they say the best way to catch this bird is through ecstatic song and dance. So all of their um, realizations, you know, and, and uh, meditations and instructions in, in their practice, all these things are put into song and they're passed down from guru to disciple. And it's, it's an oral tradition. Um, and the song is really their I think main, I think vehicle or to, to access the divine. Um, 
And uh, so their songs, yeah, are super mystical and, and have so many deep and hidden meanings. Um, uh, so no wonder I'm inspired by them. But uh, um, the word Baal also means mad. Not mad like I'm angry with you, but mad like I'm crazy. I'm crazy for God. So they are sometimes called, referred to as the Mad Men um, of Bengal. And um, I became super, you know, interested in them in my travels to India and, and in my whatever spiritual life. And, and I was very blessed to have become adopted by a, a Baal family um, and, and a Baal teacher. His name's Haridan Das Baal. And I've, you know, spent a lot of time with him um, at his home in Bengal and also out in the villages. Um, um, learning from him about that Baal culture and, and, and learning Baal songs. Um, it's been really some of the most treasured moments of my life. Um, and one time when I was staying there for an extended period of time and, and, and learning with him, um, I wanted to write a song that was inspired by this madness, you know, this madness for the spirit. You know, they sing songs like, this world is a madhouse, everybody's crazy, right? Some are crazy for sex, some are crazy for money, some are crazy for fame, you know? But who's crazy for God? Who's crazy for the spirit? Let me be crazy for the spirit, just mad, you know? Uh, so I wanted to write a song that kind of paid homage to the vows, but also um, kind of inspired me to like, inspired that oh, that madness within my own being. So I wrote this in, in Calcutta when I was with Baba, with Haridandas Baba. And um, yeah, it's always been one of my favorite songs and um, it brings back a lot of beautiful memories. And it's called, uh, it's called The Weaver. So uh, yeah, here it is for the balls. Weave your 
your actions well into the fabric of your soul Okay, so in keeping with the, I guess the Bao vibe, uh, after singing that song, now I'm all inspired to sing a Bao song, a real Bao song. That was a plastic Bao song. <laughs> and this is a, a real Bao song that was taught to me by my Bao guru, Harudan Das. Uh, so. I don't normally get to sing these types of songs publicly, um, but I guess now I'm in the mood, so we'll, we'll, uh, I'll give it a go. This is uh, my ektara that Haradan Das uh, built himself, made with his own hands, gave to me, so it's one of my treasures. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite songs he taught me. It's a really beautiful song. Um, like I was saying with, with uh, the Baos, the Monar Manush, the, the uncatchable bird, there's a lot of bird language um, in their songs, and this is a song that kind of has that um, vibe. Um, I'd like to just read the translation quickly and then uh, I can, I'll sing the song, but um, it says, uh, this is a song to Mother, the Divine Mother, it says, O Ma, I will stay like a rain bird in the skies of your sadhana. So the chatuk bird is a, a bird that uh, it only drinks water from the rain. Uh, and not only that, it only drinks the rain water when a certain phase of the moon, a certain, um, uh, you know, season like, like this, uh, symbolizing like um, going for the essence, right? It only wants the highest, you know, it only wants that. So the singer here is, is um, you know, saying, oh, Ma, I will, I, I will stay like a rain bird in the skies of your sadhana. And then says, when will I see the rain of your grace, oh, Ma, in the skies of your sadhana? When will that rain that grace fall, you know, when will I see that grace? Uh, and then the second part says, having become com complete uh, through the fire of this objective world, O Ma, the universe appears and floats. So some mystical, you know, language here. Um, and then and then says, the, my thirst is not quenched by this water. My thirst is not quenched by this salt water. Um, one is in the hope for the charnamritam. One is in hope for that nectar coming from your, from you, from your lotus feet in the skies of your sadhana. I want that. I don't want the water of this salty world, you know. So it's kind of a song of longing. Um, and um, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So I'm going to give it a go here. Hope you enjoy. Um, ma, ma, go, ami chato. Chato Koi Thakbo Mago 
Shadu Nakashe Ami Dekbo Mago Kovei Tomar Dekbo Mago Kovei Tomar Kripa Borose Shadu Nakashe Ami Chato Koi Thakbo Mago Shado Nakashe Ma Mago Bishai Jale Purno Hoye Mago ye shang share vase Bishai jale purno hoye Mago ye shang share vase Oi no na jale Miti na pipasa Oi no na jale Miti na pipasa Achai charan Mari rase Shado na kase Ami chato koi Thakbo mago Shado na kase Ami chato Ami dekbo mago Ami dekbo mago Kovei tomar Dekbo mago Kovei tomar Kripa borose Shado nakase Ami chato koi thakbo mago shado nakase Ma khe pare khe pare Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai Ma. Jai Ma. This love you'll never shake it It's got its hands and eyes and oh so many, many places You could try to run but you could never hide the whole world This is home, mother earth and father sky It taught me feed and serve and to remember God Remember love is not outside, it's within your heart It comes with fierce grace, transcending the time and space Love for the whole human race, come and get your days
lets me know he loves me just the way I am Meeting God's hands don't have to change a strand of my hair or my eye color Nobody's other, all the sister brothers in the family The family tree grows so tall that it scrapes the sky Lost in its branches and I don't know why Fixed both of my wings and taught me how to fly A river of joy for tears flows from my eyes You're sitting inside, this is the calling No more of stalling Reach and grab the hand of the friend of the fallen Queen's on the island but we'll jump the ocean Gonna build a bridge of love and set it in motion Throw out your reason This love's in season Sings in the earth and the air that we're breathing This is the chapter Symphony of laughter never dies, let the child of divine. Yeah. So the story goes. Just as the river flows. And so the story goes. Charana saro jaraja Nijamana mukur sudhar Varano ragu bara bimala jasu Chodaya kupala char Uddin tano jane ke Sumeram pavan kumas yaram Allah de vidya de umohi Varu kale sabeka Syavara ram chandra padaje charanam Jaya hanuman gyana guna saag Jaya kapi sati unloka ujaga Shanovaran Virat 
djede Hanuman Gosai Pakarogurudeva Kinai Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Ram Cho Sato Bara Pakta Karako Chute Hi Bandi Masuka Hoi पर हनुमान चलिस ओयास दिशा की गौड़ी श्री राम जी राम जी जय राम श्री राम जी राम जी जय राम तुलसीदास सदा हरि चेर की जय नाथ हृदय महादेव Sankataharana Mangalamurti Rupsiara Ramalakana Sita Sahita Rudeba Sarasura Bupa Siavara Ramachanda Parajesharana Mangalamurti Timartananda Sakala Mangalamula Nekanda Mangalamurti Martananda Sakala Mangalamula Nekanda Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Yeah, I'm 
जय भगवान जय मीन्स विक्टरी हेल हेल लुया भगवान इज द लिविंग प्रेजेंस विद इन अस द लव दैट लिव्स विद इन अस इज हु वी ट्रूली आर वेन वी सिंग जय भगवान we sing victory to our own hearts may that love conquer all the darkness jai bhagavan jai bhagavan jai bhagavan jai bhagavan path at all if we know that there might be a way to live in this world in a good way with an open heart without fear and maybe some peace of mind it's only because of the great beings that have gone before us on this path out of their love out of their kindness they left some footprints for us to follow so in the same way that they wish for us we wish that all beings everywhere all of us be safe be happy that all of us have good health and enough to eat and may we all live in peace and that ease of heart that ease of heart with whatever comes to us in life shanti means peace peace beyond understanding when we know who we are when we live in the love that lives within us then we are peace May we all be that.